Hi, welcome. Simon here, and I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be doing a teardown on an MSI gaming laptop. In this teardown process, I'll explain to you what are the things that you can upgrade. So, for example, there would be a hard drive or your RAM, and maybe explain on how to change out the battery or maybe the motherboard. So, I'll do step by step from start to the end, and I'll walk you through on how to do the process. Now let's turn it around, take a look at the back of your laptop. Here it says the MS16R4, that is the model of my laptop here. And let me take out the back cover. So if you notice, there were some missing screws already to begin with. Um, just ignore the missing screws. I know that you have the screws on, so pause the video, unscrew them, and follow along with the other steps all right so the first thing you like to do is to get your phillips screwdriver so this is my phillips and i'll be removing all the screws so there there's one missing screw here already two three that's quite a few four and five missing screws Six. So I have six total mixing, mix, missing screws here. Um, it looks like the screws are all the same sizes. And um, it's okay to mix match your screw. Now once you have removed the entire screw, the next process is to take it apart. And I like to work on the, uh, the weakest point. And if you have trouble opening up, I suggest you to get like a prying tool, stick it in between the corner, right? So this is the corner, stick it in between, not to be too deep, just enough for you to um, separate the plastic cover, okay? All right, once you have the back cover removed, as you can see, this is your entire laptop, the motherboard, the CPU fan, the hard drive. So let me do a quick walk through what you're looking at. At least you get an idea. Um, this is your Wi-Fi card or the NIC card. This is your M.2 solid state drive. And this is the C drive that has all the data on it. And this is your secondary drive. Mine has a secondary drive. In your case, you might not have it, depending on the model that you bought. Um, but yeah, so usually the C drive is on a solid state drive and the data drive is on a regular hard drive. This is your CMOS battery. These are your DDR4 RAM and it's eight gigs. And the other one should be an eight gigs. You can do 16 and 16, that goes up to 32. You now you can running at 8 and 8, that would be 16. Or it could be 8 and 4, that would be 12. Here is your battery, your CPU fan. And this is the copper heat sink, where the fan would exhausting on both sides, to the right and away from you, to disperse the hot air. I believe one of these are, is the CPU. And probably this is your graphics card. Now the bottom here are your speakers, left and right. The first thing I like to do is to disconnect the battery. What you can do is I'll be using my um, fingernail to try to pull it down. If you have a hard time to do that, what you want to do is leverage with push and pull. Okay. So I'll show it to you how to do that. Well, I'm pulling it down at the same time I'm pushing it down as well. Okay, so I'm pulling down the connector and I'm pushing down with the plastic prying tool as well. There's no clipper or what whatsoever, it just pretty much slide down to remove the battery. 
Now my battery is still in a good condition. It's flat and it's hold the charge. But if your battery is swollen or if you see a lump on the battery, that means it is time for a replacement. Now where you find a replacement battery, if you take a closer look here, it says model name BTY M. 6k that is your battery model what i'll do is i'll link all the add-ons and all the parts in the description below if you check on the uh, description there will be link down in the description where it will direct you to either amazon or ebay to replace or to buy uh, a replacement parts all right, so let's move on to the next step. Once we remove the battery, let's go ahead and disconnect the secondary drive. It's a regular Phillips screw. I'm using an electric screwdriver here. It's just a regular Phillips. And once you remove the two screws, you can slide down the secondary drive, slide it down. If you want to upgrade to two terabyte, to four terabyte, to eight terabyte, or to 12 terabyte, you're happy to do that um, by simply removing another two screws here at the bottom, transfer this to the larger hard drive. Now let's go ahead and remove this one here. This is the M.2 drive. slide it to your right it's kind of a little bit sticky because there's a double uh, not double sided tape because there is a thermal pad so slide it to my right I'm gently lifting it up a little bit and slide it to your right so try not to break it because it's a very thin uh, little plastic here these are thermal pads right so what they do is they'll conduct the heat transfer from the m.2 over you know to disperse the heat so it can get quite sticky and quite difficult to remove it so you just have to be um, gently to try to remove it okay now if you want to upgrade the m.2 um, here is the 512 gigabyte you can upgrade to like one terabyte or two terabyte it's up to your choice um yeah it's that's how you remove it i'm sorry i got disturbed with the background noise here my other laptop is it just reset back to factory settings and cortana is talking in the background all right so let's move on ddr4 ram to remove it you just got to push it on both sides that's how you remove the ram same thing apply on this one push it the clipper on both sides away from it and slide the RAM away from um, from the laptop again these are DDR4 gigs RAM all right PC4 stands for DDR4 and this is 8 gigabytes and you can upgrade to 16 and 16 up to 32 okay. and let's put this on the site all right, we pretty much have removed most of it. And this is uh, your speaker. The speaker is quite easy to remove. You just have to slide the connector down. So slide it down towards the body. And the left speaker is here. And you just follow along with the cable and just remove the right speaker. And if you have a bad speaker problem, all right? For my case, I'm not going to remove the speaker because my speaker is still good. So just leave it as this. This is your CMOS battery. Okay, so here comes the Wi-Fi NIC card, wireless Wi-Fi card. Remove the uh, the screw. Now you want to keep in mind which cable goes away because both of them are black, but they do have a tiny little indicator here, the red. Red is for the left and then no indicator is on the right remove by simply just lift it straight up they are kind of like lego the snap on to remove just pull it straight up and can slide the wi-fi cut out put that on the side and there goes the wi-fi antenna the wi-fi cable here is your graphics card uh, sorry the lcd um 
the LCD cable. To remove the LCD, you need to open up the clipper, flip it towards your body so now it's locked. Flip it straight up towards your body. And you can just remove the, the LCD cable here. Here is your CPU fan. To remove the fan, I just lift the connector straight up. Remove the screw. Okay, and let's go ahead and remove the uh, heat sink as well. Okay, so I'm going to lift it straight up. I'm putting some pressure, but I'm not forcing it all at once because you do not want to break the copper. The copper uh, has water in it. So just leave it a pressure enough to separate them. The reason why I say that is because the um, thermal pad are still taping onto the motherboard. So if you put too much pressure and lift it up at one go, uh, you may actually bend the metal or the copper. So just enough force to let the thermal pad separate on its own. Okay, once you separate it, um, I believe this is the CPU and this is the graphics card. Let's take a look, all right? Let's not guess on it. Now, the CPU fan, can you replace it? Yes, you can. Um, the way they design, you can do two things. You can either buy the entire build like this, the copper and the CPU fan, or you can just remove the screw, four screw, and this CPU will just come right out, the CPU fan here. The, this entire heatsink is still in one piece. With the bracket, the only thing when you remove the four screw is the back of the CPU would just come out. This, this part would come right off. Now the replacement part, you might want to look it up on this one, PABD08008SH, um, or just look it up on eBay, or check out my link in the description below. All right, so let's put that on the side here. What do you want to do is you want to get this alcohol pad. This alcohol pad allows you to clean out the uh, thermal paste. And once you clean the thermal paste and you can get this thermal, um, a new thermal compound and apply it on the CPU and the GPU. And yeah, you would have a, um, a better way to conduct the, the heat. Also, if you since you took it apart, if you want to clean out your CPU fan, uh, get one of those Aiken duster and just spray it to remove all the dust so that it helps the computer to cool off a lot better. All right, so we have done all that. The next step I like to do is to go ahead and remove the motherboard. So once you remove four screws or three screws, I think I'm missing one screw. I wonder where did it go? Probably drop it somewhere here. Okay, found it. So remove that three screws. Once you remove them, go ahead and flip the motherboards towards yourself. The reason is because all the cables are still connected, right? So like this motherboard cable is still connected. Op flip, open the clipper, slide the... Uh, cable away from you. This one here, you need to push the two little clip uh, side 
it's a sliding clipper so you slide it in and to remove it you got to open up the clipper and slide your keyboard backlighting so this is your keyboard backlighting cable uh, same thing for this one is the keyboard so push the two side and then slide that cable out and this final cable is still attached to it because they kind of tape onto the motherboard so you can just remove it slightly it is just double double sided tape on so once you remove that the entire motherboard will just come right out and if you want to do a motherboard replacement you might want to lock it up here you say ms16r41 version 1.0 this is how the motherboard looks like and yeah let's put that on the side now here's your keyboard if you take a closer look there's no screw that holds onto the keyboard and the bad part about this is if you spill anything on the keyboard and your keyboard is not working unfortunately you would have to replace the entire keyboard here so in other words you would have to replace the entire palm rest with the keyboard all right so let me show it to you what i mean by that so we're going to flip open the hinge Okay, here you can get to see that the keyboard, the power button, right? The keyboard, the touchpad is all built in, in one piece like this. Unfortunately, for you to replace the key, broken keys, you would have to replace the entire palm rest, just like one piece like this. Okay, um... Just because the way they designed it, this keyboard here is not replaceable. Uh, they have this punch down and seal. We can't remove it to replace the keyboard. Uh, that's quite unfortunate. All right. So I just wanted to point it out to you. And here is the um, cover. I should have removed it earlier, but you get the picture. I, I think I did kind of tilt a little bit to show you how to remove it and this is your entire screen so if you want to replace your entire screen that's how you can do that or you can just remove the bezel and then just work on the lcd screen all right so i hope that this teardown helps you and guide you to your repair uh, if you have any question comment below i will read those comments and I'll answer you accordingly all right so um if you feel this video is helpful please go ahead and click the like and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I'll make more of this video content in the near future. Um, again, I'd like to hear from you. Let me know if this video is helpful or not. And I hope you learn something every day. Thank you for watching. Bye now.